Uh, so today we are welcoming architect Sheetal Rakeja, who is a graduate from Sushant School of Art and Architecture and an accredited lead green building professional, executive member of IGBC, president of International Fenestration Forum, and a visiting faculty at SPA Delhi. With her extensive work on the subject, we are honored to have uh, architect Sheetal Rakeja today here with us to share her take on role of passive technology and nature in energy efficient and net zero buildings. So I'd like to welcome you, Sheetal Ma'am, and uh, yeah, you can- Thank you me. so much. Thank you so much uh, for the introductions. Uh, I am, uh, it's my pleasure to be here and share my thoughts, my views and my experiences on designing the you know, green buildings today. Uh, so I'll just start, I'm basically an architect, uh, an interior designer, run a practice uh, out of Delhi. So we've done uh, projects all across India. Uh, we focus, our focus is sustainability, our focus is how we can, uh, you know, endeavor to balance uh, environmental consciousness with the buildings that we design and make people who are going to inhabit how their well-being, uh, you know, can be thought through. So we try to balance all of that. Uh, I'm also the chairperson of the Indian Green Building Council, Delhi chapter, and uh, have been working a lot uh, in, you know, promoting green buildings and kind of educating the students and people about, uh, you know, what, what are the benefits of uh, making buildings which are energy efficient, uh, which are resource efficient, and which are, uh, which are, uh, you know, concerning to the health and uh, well-being of the occupants. So uh, with that, I'd like to, you know, start my presentation. So I'll be covering today. So I'll be covering uh, on the role of passive technology and the role of nature in designing energy efficient and net zero energy buildings. So, uh, you know, we've been working for last almost 25 years, uh, you know, and my, me and my team, we've been, uh, you know, it's been an ex amazing experience when we started, uh, you know, we, we did a couple of renovation projects where we did refurb refurbishment of buildings and try to make them more energy efficient. And then we did uh, certain uh, projects were totally green field, which uh, were designed as green buildings. So uh, along that we, you know, with every project, our intention or our, uh, you know, endeavor was to do better in terms of resource energy efficiency. So that, you know, tomorrow our footprint uh, is minimum. That was the intent. So the first understanding, you know, was that all at all scales, whether you are designing a small building to a large city. So at all scales for anything to be sustainable, it has to integrate and balance ecology with social and economic components of that uh, place of that community. The second understanding is that there's a lot of, uh, you know, heritage that we carry and a lot of uh, experiences from the past, a lot of learnings, which we can, you know, take forward. So like, for example, these slides so show that, you know, in a dry, uh, hot and dry place, how the shading of the streets actually help, uh, you know, keeping the interiors and these streets cool, how having smaller windows you know, uh, help in getting uh, less heat into the building and how having thick thermal mass also reduces the heat inlet into the building. So there's a lot of uh, learnings that we have from our past. The third understanding is that nature is a very powerful tool. It can help us, you know, going forward. Uh, nature is what can really transform something which is so simple and plain into poetic, something which is, you know, every day into sublime. It helps to uplift our spirits. It helps to regenerate one's body and soul. There have been enough researches which have been done which show that how patients heal better, students perform better when they're connected to nature, when they're connected to green. We all love to take holidays around, uh, you know, uh, nature areas because that helps to really calm our minds, rejuvenate us and make us, uh, you know, more, uh, make, makes us much better to deal with day to day. So, and then there is so much biodiversity in nature. What nature builds is self-sustaining. So then there are natural systems which help to recharge the water, which, you know, we have, and man unfortunately has taken a toll on them. That's why we see flooding happening because these flood plains have been taken away. 
and these were like lovely areas you know these wetlands which actually promoted uh, biodiversity and ecology so uh, and of course nature is very inspiring colors textures there's i mean unanimously we all agree that there's a lot of beauty in that nature that's why we gravitate towards it so the urban environment or even smaller projects that we design if we can respect and engage nature and get it back it will help to resolve you know i think 80 to 90% of our problems for example these areas can not only be uh, you know ecologically more sustainable when you get nature it is social it these can become lovely social spaces for us and then you know that actually uh, gets a sense of belonging and pride for the community if these beautiful spaces are part of our daily lives and they also like i said you know it helps to really rejuvenate us so if they become part of our uh, daily lives it it will it will make a sea change then they can be all integrated together so that the environment economy and the social sustainability can all go uh, hand in hand this is a project i'd like to share which uh, you know we did back in 2008 uh, it was one of the usgbc uh, one of the largest and largest projects uh, you know in core and shell category awarded by usgbc now uh, this was uh, you know earlier thought to be designed as one building but uh, what we uh, you know what we told the developer was that instead of one building it's much better to make different buildings which would help shade each other so that you know the load from the envelope is really reduced so what we did was that uh, there are three buildings actually that you see here and all these three buildings are mutually shading each other they are all north south oriented uh, for a delhi climate uh, orientation like north south works very well because the sun travels from east to west via south so north is uh, you know north generally you will have a very diffuse light and you will not have any direct glare coming in from there and south can more easily be treated whereas by solar horizontal sorry i mean horizontal uh, projections can help shade the building from the high sun so you can still get a diffuse light without getting the glare inside so uh, these are uh, from their second floor onwards north south oriented but what we did was additionally that we stilted the ground floor and uh, uh, you know created a so what we call as urban realm we call a public realm where people can actually spend time congregate socialize and these are the spaces where they actually connect with nature before they get into their uh, building so it's not that they're just getting off the car and you know going into their uh, built environment they're actually passing through these beautiful landscape areas uh, so the even the entrances to these atriums are from inside the red line actually what we call as nature walk is where you know people actually walk through because the entrance to these atriums are from that side rather than giving it from the uh, from the road side and then we placed uh, water bodies along the wind direction so that actually you would get uh, you know a cooler wind when it blows through this uh, stilted area so that when people are actually spending time there they, it's they are under a shade they are getting a nice breeze so that even uh, you know when you go in fact when you go today there uh, in peak of june you go there in july you go there in may you will actually find people uh, you know using these public areas and that helps to form a lovely social community so uh, you know besides the work community so they actually people socialize they sit here they play guitar so it's a beautiful social space which has got formed and of course while caring for the environment now uh, so that's that's the uh, you know uh, view from from the sunken court overlooking these stilted areas and the buildings um, that's the section which talks about the public realm where we have the gym and the cafe and the lower ground area which is surrounded by earth so it's much cooler there's a lot of light which does come into the sunken areas so um, and there's a lot of visual connectivity in this campus so it's a campus like feel which gets formed although these were corinthian buildings and there are different owner i mean different uh, tenants here yet you know people mingle and uh, uh, mingle and then you know once they they feel proud of this place they take care of this space uh, if you see the section here the office spaces are actually starting from the second floor onwards and the footplate is such that it's able to capture natural light from both sides so the reliability on the artificial light really goes down 
then uh, over and above this we took care that the window wall ratios were very balanced they were uh, you know down to 25% instead of giving a complete glass building and so it's only 25% of the uh, windows which actually get in natural light and natural light i mean almost 80 to 90% of these areas are well lit through diffuse natural light then uh, you see the buildings and these windows also get shaded uh, through these uh, buildings which are shading each other. So that's an added advantage uh, that we have here. This is what we call the nature's walk from where people actually experience this greenery, chirping of birds and there's water bodies. And uh, this project got featured in National Geographic where they actually, uh, you know, this, this is a project where almost 800 square feet area gets air conditioning by air conditioned by just one ton of air conditioning. Unlike your regular buildings, which uh, about 200 to 250 square feet, you are using one ton of air conditioning. So, uh, uh, so you know, National Geographic came and they actually audited the entire building and they realized that it was performing even better than what we were claiming. They interviewed people and they came to know that, you know, people love coming here. In fact, they come to the office an hour or a half an hour early, spend time here before they go to the offices. And even in the evening, they would repeat this because, uh, you know, that helps to really, uh, you know, uh, calm them down. It helps to really rejuvenate them every day so that's uh, that's what a lot of people gave a feedback now uh, to get to that 800 square feet uh, for one ton of air conditioning there's a lot of thought there's a lot of uh, uh, you know integration of architecture and mep and uh, other services which took place we did had a lot of design charrettes because it was a tough exercise to actually you know uh, adhere to the tight budget that you were given at the same time, achieve that uh, very high energy efficiency. So besides the window wall ratio, the selection of the glass played a very important role. Since we had a low budget, we used a very high performance glass on the south and west side, whereas the north and the east side where the sun is, uh, so north side because uh, the sun is not there and east side it's only there for just a couple of hours in the morning when it's not too hot. So we went for a, a lesser uh, performance glass to save on the costing. Now, uh, the entire exercise was done by my team where they ensured that the, uh, you know, wastages are down to one to two percent. So, you know, the entire sizing of the glass, the light shelves, which help to uh, penetrate the natural light inside, deeper inside the spaces, all those calculations were done to reduce the wastages. Then, uh, then what we did was that even we have double insulated walls, but they are only on the south and west side. So we did the cost benefit analysis through computer simulations tools to understand, you know, instead of doing a double wall all around, which would have costed us much more, it was uh, perhaps, uh, you know, much economically and uh, economically viable uh, to do double wall only on the, uh, you know, south and west side and use that uh, money to actually have solar panels or you know many other things. So that's how it helped us to really save uh, in terms of the costing. Then uh, this is the view of the sunken court where people spend a lot of time. Uh, so the gym actually and the cafeteria overlooks the space. It's also a spillover of the cafe. These are the computer simulation tools which uh, allowed us to establish the projections, whether it is going to be the south side, how much should be the projection to shade, uh, you know, whether it's going to be horizontal or a vertical projection. On the north side, what should be the projection? On the east side, what should be the projection? What should be the glass? And, you know, so all those simulation, these simulation tools actually helped us to establish that. It also helped us to get the cost benefit analysis. It also helped us to actually predict on day one what would be the energy consumption of this building. Uh, so uh, we use that and, you know, and try to minimize the uh, building energy consumption, actually. These are some more, you know, views of the building. So in effect, we realized, you know, after doing a lot of uh, to and fro, a lot of integration, we from the passive measures, passive measures, I would say that, you know, uh, how we oriented the building, how we shaded uh, you know, uh, design the building such that they would shade each other, how we took care of the window wall ratios, the selection of the grass, a glass, the insulation of the envelope, whether it was the roof, the shading systems, they actually helped us to save about, uh, you know, seven to eight percent of uh, energy. And then remaining energy came from, uh, you know, efficient pumps, efficient chillers, 
heat recovery wheels where we have pre-cooling of fresh air through heat recovery uh, wheels. We pre-cool the fresh air which comes in, uh, you know, and then we also run uh, air conditioner without using the chillers in the fair weather seasons, which are November, which are February where, and March, where due to the heat of the people, heat of the equipments, you would still need air conditioning in a regular building. But here we are just pumping in fresh air uh, during those month, months without using the chillers. Then of course, using the right kind of lighting, having a natural light for uh, you know most of the time by uh, you know these shading systems. And then also having the perimeter lights linked to the daylight sensors, we were able to save uh, almost 20% energy over the ASHRAE based defined case and 45% energy compared to a standard Indian building. Then uh, we moved on to uh, another project uh, which was done later than Green Boulevard, which was Patni Campus. It was IGBC first platinum project. Uh, uh, you know, and then this also was done. I mean, it actually saved us 35% energy over the ASHRAE base case and 50% compared to standard Indian building. Now, this was a campus across, uh, you know, the, uh, the building. Now here, interestingly, what we did was we realized that courtyard works very well, um, you know, taking our inspiration from the past and how buildings were designed earlier in our composite climate. Uh, so this building is actually designed around two courtyards, taking care of the depth of the building, not to exceed a certain width so that we are able to capture natural light from, you know, both sides and have a daylight building, not relying too much on the artificial light. Now, uh, these are the two courtyards and then we have through venturi effect, well, you know, wind which blows over the water body and through a, through a jali cools this space completely, which is a landscape port where the spillover of the cafeteria is. Now, all these services, your HU rooms and all the service rooms were kept on the west uh, side leaving north and uh, south side, you know, with more glazing. Of course, uh, you know, we, we ensured that the window wall ratios were again between 28 to 30 percent. Uh, the performance glass, we used performance, high performance glasses. We then also introduced light shelves. This section shows that, you know, how light is entering through, uh, through both sides. The expanse of the light was 15 feet, which was taken up to 18 feet by use of the light shelves. Uh, uh, which was which had a light uh, which had a reflective material which not only shaded the viewing glass below but also helped to uh, act like a light shelf as i said that you know we could enhance the entry of the light into deeper wood plates by that by doing that so these are the two courtyards the left one shows that you know how wind can come through through jali and over a water body cooling the space uh, completely and then uh, these are the computer simulation tools which uh, allowed us to, uh, you know, uh, determine that what is going to be the shading system, what is the depth of the waiting system, something similar to what we had done for Green Boulevard. But here, we, because we were controlling the interiors also, there were these light shelves, and then we had tapered ceilings on the side to allow deeper penetration of light. The corner, all uh, lighting which was near the perimeter was linked to the daylight sensors and would normally not be on during the day. Then, uh, and then pre-cooling, free cooling, then, you know, modulating fresh air dampers linked to CO2 sensors, they actually help to, uh, you know, get a very high energy efficient building. So from, uh, from Green Boulevard to this Putney computers where we were actually controlling the interiors and we went even stronger in time, I mean, much efficient in terms of uh, window wall ratios, shading, we were able to perform much better and give a better energy saving on this uh, building. And of course, with the energy saving, there were many other factors which uh, happened where we were trying to connect people to nature. We were trying to do resource efficiency, ensure that glass wastages are, uh, you know, minimum selection of glass was done very thoughtfully. Uh, then we moved on, uh, you know, this was 2014, 15, where this was an existing building, uh, a corporate office where uh, there was a lot of glass, almost you know, 50 to 60% of the area was glass, uh, but uh, there was no natural light inside. And even if they, uh, you know, it was done in a way that they were uh, put blinds and they were not using it uh, in a way that would have allowed 
uh, natural light to be used. So there was a lot of reliability on the artificial light. There were not enough views, uh, uh, you know, to this building. There was a garden which had lovely trees, but it was not used because it was a glass enclosed block, this uh, building. I mean, there were no openings towards this garden, so it was not used. And then they also had an office area. If you see this left picture, the office areas were all at the ground level. So that's why it was all blocked and there was no opening in the in this, uh, you know, in this perimeter. So this garden was not really used. Then uh, even the entrance of uh, the reception was very narrow. There was an atrium which had a lot of potential in this building, but the way it was designed was that it was getting in too much heat and uh, all around it, there were glass blocks or solid walls. So nobody could really enjoy this atrium as well. So we took up this challenge and, you know, we said, let's retain the building, retain the core and shell and make it as energy efficient and resource efficient as possible. Of course, we at the same time, we wanted to create a very collaborative uh, and work environment where the, you had visibility, you had interconnectedness as uh, these were the inspiration from nature where we wanted to connect people. We wanted to give them more flexible work environment. We wanted to get in a lot of natural light. We wanted to get in more greenery so that people would actually enjoy where they're working. So first and foremost, what we did was that from the roof uh, and from the second floor where they had the cafeteria, we brought the cafeteria to the ground floor right side wing. Um, and then we opened up these glasses to have openable doors. And then we, uh, you know, retained all the trees and vegetable vegetation that they had outside. They had a lovely garden. And we, of course, added a little more value to it. We had some decks so that they could be used for outdoor seating. We had a little bit of water body along this uh, wind so that the area would be cool. Uh, then, of course, we, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, then we created a lot of collaborative spaces around this atrium. So this was the atrium, actually, uh, which was there, which had the potential, but was not really being used as the full, full potential. So all the uh, collaborative spaces were around it. There's a lot of greenery added. So people could actually enjoy sitting there. So uh, these are the floor plans. And if you notice that, you know, uh, we uh, so earlier they had a lot of HUs and other services on this east side. And uh, this is where the view, there was a view, there's a school here with a swimming pool and, you know, a lot of nice greenery. So we opened up this area completely so that, uh, you know, people would get nice view. Uh, there were some services coming here, we removed. So this is actually the north side, which was opened up completely. Uh, we had more glass uh, here and the south side the, and the west side, we blocked uh, more. And then all the collaborative zones came here. All the work areas were, you know, on the right and the left wing. Now they were, uh, you know, the workstations were pushed away from the glazing because uh, I'll just explain uh, how we did that. So this were the computer simulation models, which actually showed that, you know, if uh, we go for, so we were debating what kind of projections to do. And then we, uh, we went in for both horizontal and vertical projections, which, uh, you know, if uh, we felt that if just, they won't look aesthetically so good if they were all horizontal and, you know, crisscrossing. And then there were issues of pigeons also there. So what we did was we took the vertical projections outside the building and the horizontal, uh, the horizontal one was actually a light shell and it came inside the building and then uh, we uh, you know uh, then of course they we worked on the cost aspect so that uh, so these projections are actually 450 deep so we realized that if the projection is taken i mean if it is 600 to se sorry 750 deep it would cut off the sun glare completely throughout the day uh, whether and in all seasons but then it was costing a lot so what we uh, decided to do was that go for a 450-500 mm projection, which was much easy to build, which was more cost effective. And then, uh, you know, the light, actually the sunlight was only there for an hour uh, in the, sorry, 45 minutes in the summers and about uh, one and a half hours in the winters, which would come inside. So first and foremost, we actually moved away the workstations from that perimeter for the same. And then uh, we went on for the cost effective option, but at the same time, then we, uh, you know, we said, okay, let's have the blinds uh, pulled down during those one, one and a half hours. So we debated on going with daylight sensor control, you know, uh, linked uh, blinds, which would just come down uh, slowly for those one or two hours. So this is a typical section where, you know, this, this is the project fin, the blue color is the fin, um, you know, which projects out and yellow color is a light shelf. 
which not only you know uh, penetrates the helps to penetrate the light natural light much into into the inside spaces but also helps to shade uh, from the sun for at least uh, you know in a half an hour or so so <clears throat> these are the fins vertical elements are the fins which you know which uh, beautifully rhythmically go up and down to add a little character to the to the to the elevation to the facade this is the plan which shows how these workstations have been receded back this is what the building now looks like where the you know glazing area from 50% has been brought down to you know 30% and and uh, west side is nicely shaded heavily shaded the south side is shaded more glazing that you see here this is the north side actually the fins actually shade from the western sun and uh, here you know all these doors that you see uh, this is a door actually which opens out uh, to this uh, outdoor uh, spaces so it's a spillover people can actually enjoy and uh, they can uh, come you know they can they can socialize here and there are a lot of events and uh, you know events which actually take place here we retained all the trees existing trees this is view from the other angle and you see the west side has more solid surfaces now and uh, the uh, so this is also the west side heavily shaded it had a lot of glass earlier, which is now removed and we have more solid surfaces. Or even if you needed the glass, it is actually, uh, you know, shaded by these, uh, uh, by the jali, by the metal jalis which are there. The right side image shows all the existing trees which we retained and we designed around it. This is the atrium which I showed you earlier now, uh, nicely planted and all the walls around it are broken so that, you know, we have more uh, circle, you know, like the, breakout spaces here which so that people can enjoy this atrium and you see the quality of the light it's a very uh, it's a triple uh, actually glazing on the top it's a laminated glass as well as uh, you know it's this form of a, a dgu which uh, helps to insulate the uh, heat which comes in at the same time you know uh, it gets in the light it's got fitting also so that it's more of a diffuse light which you get in here these are those breakout spaces which overlook that atrium. Again, just notice the uh, quality of light. It's a very beautiful diffuse light which is coming in here. These are the workstation area. Those are the light shelves that you can see. And all along, these are all uh, LED lights that we are using. Then there's another campus we moved on to. You know, this was a competition project where the building actually, uh, the sorry, the site sloped down to uh, soap down here on the right side where we were showing the water body. There was a natural drain just across the site and we filtered it and, you know, we decided, I mean, the concept was that we filtered it and we use it for recreation purposes. So uh, that's how, uh, you know, the section shows that you have uh, the building uh, slopes, I mean, the entire site is sloping down towards this area, which is the water bodies. Now the wind directions here were, so these are the shading uh, areas. So we ensured that, you know, wherever people will use the spaces, they have to be nicely shaded. So the, all the uh, um, recreation spaces were designed in areas which were shaded. The central atrium or the central, uh, you know, the central atrium gets very nice breeze. And also we have east and west side. I mean, uh, you know, the wind is east, uh, basically uh, east-west, uh, sorry, not west to east. So what we did was we had these uh, punches in the building to allow for this wind movement and uh, uh, you know and then cooling the space this is how the section looked like and these are the breaks in the building to allow for that uh, wind movement so now here uh, since the uh, you know the sun angles was much higher uh, down south so then uh, we have actually had a jolly a metal screen which would shade the glazing so that's how the, how the building was designed to be you know shaded nicely shaded uh, you know glazings even on the north side, and then, uh, uh, you know, taking care of the wind. So all these projects, we were able to create, build, do buildings which were very high performance, but then to achieve net zero, which was what we actually were aiming to do as a vision or as a passion to see our country's development at zero energy, we realized that, you know, um, so we took up a project where we said, okay, let's make it a zero energy building. This was way back again in 2008 uh, sometime. And then we said, you know, we have to do a lot more work where we have to reduce the energy consumption of that building to the bare minimum. So that, you know, the solar panels or the wind energy or any form of renewable energy that we provide, that needs to 
that needs to be minimum so that because the cost of solar was high at that time so and efficiencies were not that good so so we uh, got down to that and then uh, you know we said okay let's design a zero energy building which will be a building which produces as much energy as it will use over the course of the year but for doing that like i said we had to reduce the energy consumption of this building to the bare minimum for example if a house consumes six to eight watts per square feet. Here, we had to attempt to get it down to 1.5 or 1.3 watts per square feet so that the you know, renewables that we provide can easily be you know, accommodated within the building, which is that you see it's right here on the rooftop. Otherwise, they would have taken uh, you know, the entire site and obviously they would have costed much more. So uh, we uh, took these four old containers, which we, uh, you know, which we, designed around a courtyard the east and the west side uh, you know we made them form verandas which work very well in our you know climate then the south side had very small punctures and the main glazing or the main source of light was the courtyard actually and the north side and then we put truss over it and we insulated it well i mean this container actually carries uh, almost six to uh, uh, eight inches of insulation so that's how you know how it got formed and then that's the main uh, front desk and uh, front deck from where you enter there's an entrance lobby which of course is not air conditioned and then beyond this point the living study and bedroom is all air conditioned space and two of these were uh, uh, you know containers actually form verandas for these uh, for these glazings so that's how the conceptual uh, look and feel was and then uh, we, uh, you know, went, uh, I mean, this is just to explain the step-by-step -step approach, how we reduce the energy consumption, where initially the electrical loads for a regular bill, like if this was a regular, um, you know, house, it would, uh, of the same proportion as what we uh, made Shunya, then we replicated the model through energy simulation tools, and we saw that the electrical loads was uh, 8,562, cooling, cooling load at that time was two tons for this particular project and carbon emissions were 7.6 tons. And then we oriented it right. So having a north-south orientation, as I explained, and we saw that we could save 2% energy. Then we insulated the roof, we could save another 2.5% energy. And then we insulated the walls. So like I said, there was almost six to eight inches of insulation on uh, you know, different sides. And then this allowed us to a major reduction in uh, you know, major savings, which was 6.5% saving we could get. And then we saw that our cooling loads actually dropped down from two tons to almost 1.7 tons. And so did the electrical loads drop down. And then we used DGU and UPVC frame against uh, aluminum uh, frame. Uh, while we did debate about using uh, aluminum frame with thermal break, but uh, this was giving us slightly better performance at that time. So we went ahead and used UPVC and then it helped to save another 4% energy. Then wall, window wall ratios, we reduced the window wall ratios and got it down from 50% to 25% as we were doing in other projects of ours. And it saved another 4.5% 4 energy. We ensured that the, you know, the windows placement uh, was such and the amount of glazing was such that it was able to get at least all areas to be naturally lit with diffused light. So all uh, we don't really need artificial light except in the evenings. And then uh, we had daylight sensors, occupancy sensors, which again save 6% energy. Sharing devices, which saved another 5.5% energy. And then courtyard, of course, plays its role. The entire glazing, as I said, the major part of the glazing actually was through, uh, was inside the court. And we got, uh, and we also had louvers to cut any glare which came into the courtyard. So you had a very beautiful, diffused light which came into these spaces and uh, furthermore uh, since the first container was actually not uh, air conditioned and in addition we had openable windows to these courtyards from all the areas so uh, it's because this courtyard was uh, louvered it was shaded but still allowed evaporative cooling it allowed heat to dissipate from inside it became a nice source of ventilation it became a nice source of light and of course, it had beautiful plants inside. So it became a nice place for viewing as well. And courtyards, as I said, well, very, work very well in our climate. And this uh, natural ventilation helped to save about 9% of energy because many weathers or many, uh, you know, many times you don't really need air conditioning. But since you're in an enclosed space, you would switch it on because it would retain heat. 
so if you have openable windows it will allow you know in the evenings for the heat to dissipate you can actually uh, run without air conditions then we used uh, uh, we used uh, energy efficient uh, lights we used uh, you know hybrid air conditioner and that actually helped in cutting off Uh, all uh, extra energy that this house required then of course efficient equipments whether it was refrigerator and uh, or washing machines and uh, you know through both active measures as well as passive measures we were able to uh, you know achieve that net zero status we uh, it was just 3 kilowatt of uh, solar pvs which uh, got installed uh, on the roof and roof had the area to actually uh, take care of it so we uh, actually saved if you see this table from cooling load came down from 2 ton to 2.8 tons only and carbon emissions half our uh, electrical loads you know cut off by 60 65% and uh, that's how you know and then we had solar light solar water heater solar cooker so it was no so this was called shunya and shunya means uh, zero but also interestingly shunya is also the shikhar of a temple where we believe as humans when we created those temples is where the cosmos and the earth met and that was the energy center it was the energy center where heaven and earth met and this is where everything gets created and destroyed it was a closed loop cycle so the same thing you know the energy closed loop cycling created and finished here water closed loop Uh, cycling not a drop of water goes out of this uh, uh, project closed in terms of wastage everything is you know converted to manure and used here so so this actually was true shunya zero water zero waste and zero energy um, that's how it worked this shows how the energy demand and the pv generation how that cycle actually uh, runs so that end in the end the demand is actually net zero this shows the food cycle how it's created in the vegetable garden right here on this project and use solar cooker to cook it and all the food waste is actually converted to manure and used within the same garden so again a uh, you know even same terms of the water cycle then you know vegetation on top actually help to uh, insulate also so using vegetation not only to grow your vegetables but you're at the same time allowing it to insulate your roof and then of course if you don't have uh, enough roof area you can use vertical green walls uh, you know vertical green gardens so and you know coming back to nature so all about connecting ourselves to nature these are some pictures that show how old materials were refurbished there was no new um, you know furniture or fixture or sorry not no new furniture or doors which were really bought everything is old refurbished which is there so uh, you know that these are some more pictures for the exhibition so we took this concept now we've taken this concept to in almost uh, many type of buildings we've done a project uh, which is a club which is a zero energy club and then we've taken this concept to a office space which uh, we had designed where uh, this was a project and you know it had a very tight boundary uh, which was 800 square meter but we we used these were marshlands on the top where the irrigation canal is written and there was a irrigation canal running through it so we worked on the concept of borrowed landscape where we didn't have you know solid uh, boundary walls we actually uh, cre uh, created a sense of a borrowed landscape where these spaces which is a marshland actually looks as if it's part of the site and then um, these are uh, you know we studied the climate of kolkata a warm humid climate and what uh, you know how the shading would work if we had because uh, it was a high fsi so it would be a tall building but how best to design it these uh, we studied the wind directions and how best to use the outdoor areas so this is the building where uh, you know on the north side we put all the workstations and all the uh, all the cabins actually went on the south side because north would give us again we realize a bigger expanse of glazing without too much uh, heat or the direct uh, sunlight actually more of uh, sunlight not not much of sunlight which would come in so a uh, work say open work stations were kept that side and the south side which uh, i'll just show you the picture has uh, the cabins now uh, we did lot of uh, models your computer simulation models to see what would be the best way to orient these solar panels so that they would be used to the optimum and they can be efficiently uh, you know generate energy uh, in electricity but at the same time we get good views for the occupants and we get shading for these cabins 
So we did a lot of fermentation combinations, tilting these, uh, you know, uh, tilting these uh, solar panels, which you see cladding all across the south side to various angles to see the best angle for view, the best angle for, uh, you know, electricity generation for solar panels and the best angle for actually cutting off the glare. So, um, yeah, and that uh, picture also shows this concept of borrowed landscape. It shows that how these umbrellas are made out of solar panels itself to actually uh, not only shade, but create, uh, create uh, you know, lighting in the night. So uh, coming back to this image, so we have some breakout uh, terrace gardens here and the top terrace garden uh, is for the just above the corporate floor and it is shaded nicely by the solar panels which come on the roof, uh, roof there. So this is a section which uh, say that, okay, you know, we have a public area here and then private offices are from the second to the sixth floor, seventh and eighth floor was senior management and top was gardens, which were nicely shaded by the solar panels. So uh, these were some concepts that we had done, you know, how solar panels can be used effectively in the, to shade also. So these are the glare and analysis which we did for the project, you know, and uh, understanding that how much heat and light is coming uh, at various facades. So the intent, like I said, was that, you know, how we reach the zero energy status for this building, which was almost 40,000 square feet. So we worked, uh, so we worked with the, uh, with the owner who themselves were as part of the uh, solar panel manufacturing, where uh, we, uh, you know, we, we, we actually calculated the amount of energy this building would need. And then we calculated that, you know, if you have to get to the net zero status, if we were to put solar panels all across the building on all facades, while ideally a south facade would be best for the generation of the solar, uh, but at the same time, roof could be also used. So solar for the roof, solar for all the facades, we were able to get about uh, 67.5 kilowatt hour generation. So now to get the net zero energy status, we had to reduce the demand of this building energy consumption of this building to similar or lesser. You know, so that was the complete exercise where we again, like what we did for our Shunya project through computer simulation tools, we uh, we we modeled the building and then we replicated the building and we said on a computer uh, uh, tool and then we said, okay, you know, let's put wall insulation. We tried different thicknesses of wall insulation. We tried the window wall ratios. We tried, uh, you know, uh, different type of glasses. We tried all active measures that using high efficient chillers, high efficient VRVs. I mean, what would give us the best uh, result? So with after calculating all of that, we were calculating and brainstorming. We were actually able to arrive at the EPI of this project to 67.3 kilowatt hour per square meter, which was similar to what the solar panels uh, that, uh, you know, with a combination of uh, roof solar and the BIPVs, which is building integrated, uh, you know, solar panels, we were able to get. So we achieved the net zero status on design there. So in the end, you know, I would like to say that whether it's a small building to a larger thing, you know, if sustainability is the key to move forward in this world and it's the demand today. So if we have, greener street, efficient and cleaner transportation, we use renewable energy, we all will progress towards the goal of sustainable living. It's very much achievable, very much doable. It's not rocket science. So sustainable buildings and infrastructure will also help build sustainable communities by maintaining and enhancing quality of life, our interest, needs, and culture through integration of economic development, environment protection, and social health and well-being in mutual reinforcing manner. And, you know, India will be a society with net zero energy bills, zero waste and zero water and minimal carbon footprint, an earth friendly society, positive India. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was very enlightening. And uh, it was definitely something very insightful for everyone who's looking into sustainability and architecture which I'm uh, assuming a lot of people are nowadays. So, but my first question to you, I think uh, you might even guess this, is why don't uh, architects generally approach uh, their projects through this angle of, uh, you know, making it either net zero or extremely energy efficient 
why is that lacking in architects today everywhere like uh, is there any way of considering a project for uh, this particular category of or like putting it into a net zero category or trying to uh, make it more energy efficient so how do people approach that so uh, shivani i think now since awareness is more i mean they were definitely earlier also they were architects who've been working consistently on this not to say that architects are not but uh, you know sometimes the resistance comes from the clients because of two things one is the mindset that it will cost more and second is that uh, you know solar panels did cost a lot more uh, you know and thing you know and they were not as efficient now things have improved over you know last couple of years and having said that uh many architects didn't have this uh, you know information or the knowledge base because colleges also i feel not every college was kind of uh, pushing uh, so much but now things have really changed you know there are people are aware and uh, slowly everybody is understanding the importance you know we seeing catastrophes happening everywhere fires and flooding and you know uh, water salt shortages electricity shortages so i mean you know it's the need of the hour so it, people are being pushed so now i see lot more architects and a lot more people pushing that right now where the green buildings uh, you know if designed rightly like i said when you take care of orientation when you take care of these small things uh, like i said we've done very cost effective buildings and made them uh, platinum you know really got them platinum it's just a lot of integration a lot of thought process which needs to come in and uh, you know uh, so we have to get out of that lethargy mode and push the clients push everyone it is possible with a minimum uh, i would say like literally not not much uh, extra cost for having uh, and you know earlier our codes also didn't talk about it so there was like the leap from doing a building which was standard to a efficient building was a lot because our codes never said now now ecbc and all have come in so automatically your buildings you know if you design you are almost you're quite a quite a bit there without additional cost right because you have to comply with the codes codes so that now, so now not much investment is required so things are changing they have changed and they are changing uh, rapidly and we uh, you know us at igbc and i'm sure other uh, other uh, at other platforms everyone's promoting green buildings you know now uh, uh, coming uh, uh, to the second thing on the net zero so energy efficient buildings are not a, you know are, are no rocket science they are doable it's just a little bit of effort which is required and no extra cost but yes when you go to a net zero status net zero energy there the investment uh, kind of comes in for putting the solar power you know panels where i said you know to achieve that also you i mean because solar power was expensive or a uh, you know doing uh, renewable may be expensive some of it so uh, what we did was you reduce the energy consumption of your building to the bare minimum and then you take that solar Thing. but now there are so many incentives there are so many uh, companies coming forward and they're saying that okay instead of paying your electricity bill you pay us over so and you know then after some time your building will get that solar uh, power so things are changing and i think uh, it's in the right direction and it's not far that we see that you know one day we will be a net uh, zero if not positive at least net zero society right now sir that's something we are all looking forward to Uh, so, uh, as an advice to a young architect who is probably taking up a net zero project, what do you think? Do you, can you uh, tell us if there is a checklist on how you can identify a project that you will be getting or you are currently working on that can become net zero? Yeah. So I, as I said, we've done Shunya a uh, long time back, and which is an example. And we actually it was put up for an exhibition, you know. Uh, and at that time, uh, you know, getting access to things was even more difficult. So uh, uh, you know, now this so uh, so basically we put up for an exhibition. The response was great. There were students and people who came and saw that. Then we ran that house for almost one year. A uh, developer ran that to see if it is actually functioning the way it's designed to function, and it did. so uh, after that we designed this office space uh, which is 40000 square feet and uh, worked a lot worked to make it a z- zero energy we did a club which was zero energy so there is examples are and likewise i'm sure there are other architects who've done similar kind of building so now the examples are there 
you know there is a i think uh, there is one uh, building in delhi uh, which is a zero energy building there's a building in noida which is zero energy so there are examples of many for, for these young architects and students to go and see you know and uh, you know they they're all available they're all those visits can be organized uh, by these various igbc does all these you know we at RG, igbc and i'm sure other platforms also people are organizing these uh, visits so it's all that is available to them and uh, computer generation schools obviously help to get that i mean uh, did i answer uh, your uh, question correctly i mean is that what you wanted to understand yeah so uh, i think uh, we can get in more detail in the next question i was going to ask you uh, you uh, we've seen in your projects that you've shown right now how you beautifully relate the outside spaces and inside spaces like you did in the office space and the garden that was outside or uh, how you basically integrate try to integrate a lot of things uh, to bring out the sustainability and the design uh, also so can you talk about your design process uh, i'm not asking you to reveal your secrets but just in a brief manner if you can tell us about your design process uh, when you're considering energy efficiency right from the stage of conceptualization to actually the use of the building and the maintenance of the building yes yeah, so i mean right from the day one when we get uh, you know we get a project first is of course to visit the site to understand you know uh, what are the site parameters what are the site constraints where are the good views like i said in one of the projects i was showing you that you know they had beautiful uh, swimming pool and garden on the east side and they had put all the hus so the first and foremost what we did when we had to refurbish the building was remove those to a south side where there was no view so uh, you know that's what we do we do visit site uh, site to understand is there a shading so let's say there's a tall building on your one side that may not even allow you to get too much light they may be so you have to understand one is the site constraint and then where are the trees are there existing trees are they very beautiful we were doing a hotel where they had such a beautiful you know uh, the client was in a rush yeah from a concept though we did a concept but then we said we need to visit the site and when we visited the site we realized that you know uh, where we were trying to do uh, uh, we were trying to get a drop off it had a very old beautiful tree so you know so i mean looking at that we would want to retain that that would become the main feature of ours so of course you look at site you look at the slopes you look at so many things uh, in one project we saw that there was a nala you know irrigation canal can we use it to our advantage you know so people will love being near water body that will help to cool our play you know cool our uh, premises and let's give some sit outs there so that you have a nice view there so that's one so one is studying the site then uh, you spoke about energy efficiency yes i mean those are some checklists are that you you take care of the site you take care of the you know what's there to view you take care of any natural elements you know how you preserve that you take care of uh, what are the wind directions you know in that side because of course like you know for delhi let's say a wind direction is northwest but that side may have its own microclimate because of a wind building or a tree which is you know uh, obstructing that wind so you understand that and then next step is that uh, when you start designing you take care not carpet, you know where's the north where's south uh, how would you uh, how would you design according to a climate if you're designing in delhi or versus you're designing in kolkata it would be different so you take care of the climate authority you think of those as another big checklist then you of course understand what are um, you know the client requirements let's say if you're designing a hotel where will you know you need a staff movement you need a you need a, a visitor movement a guest movement which will be separate and then you understand from the site which would be the best areas to get that circulation entries exits and uh, then of course orientation and once you've designed you know taken care of your uh, basic needs and utilities and you know then then you start putting in okay this is going to be my facade but facade is uh, you know it's not that i am designing a facade separately it has to integrate with what is inside you know where i want good views where i can get a courtyard to uh, you know so if if i have a uh, if i have a restaurant i would love beautiful views i mean that's a priority if you have a room of a hotel the priority is giving the best views there you know so if you have an office you would again want to connect people to nature you know so and footprints don't be uh, you know do, do not be so it's goes hand in hand and all integrated and how the mep will function it can't come in the end it can't be planted in the end it has to be from the day one itself so that integration is important and these are the checklist mainly site and uh, you know functionality and then uh, nature how we can get you know integrated with nature what are the natural elements of the site so primarily and then how you save uh, 
uh, what kind of glass to choose. That's right. So at every stage, basically, you have something yes. that yes. you can consider. Uh, so coming to the facade, uh, we saw some very interesting use of facade in your projects. Uh, like uh, the way you've used light shells and films uh, for the corporate office in Noida. So uh, can you uh, point us to one of your, one of the most interesting uh, facades you've seen, sustainable facades you have seen anywhere in your career and like how it worked, something that you've really uh, liked and have kept in mind basically. In terms of facades? Uh... Sustainable facades, yes. Yeah, so I think uh, there is one uh, uh, there is one uh, in university in uh, or uh, institute in uh, Rajasthan, which is very nicely uh, you know used uh, screens to and then they have a corridor behind to shade uh, shade the facade. You know, while they are non dynamic, but uh, you know abroad I have seen because you know we still have that constraint of cost. But abroad I have seen a lot of these in especially in Germany. Uh, I've seen uh, facades which are, you know, uh, I don't recall the name of the buildings, but they have these dynamic facades and double facades, which would, you know, change direction. The, the entire screen would shift and change direction to get in light when required and not, I mean, kind of cut the glare when required. So every hour, the screen would change its direction. I think that's uh, truly, uh, that's, uh, it's very nice. And, and it's uh, in terms of energy efficiency, it plays a big, big role. And, you know, the facade would close, would open. So as, you know, sometimes you need the view, it opens up when you, uh, when you don't have glare coming in. And there are times when you need to shade. So the, those kind of uh, facades, I think I really appreciate and, uh, and like, and they are more in Germany. But here in India also, we have, uh, we've, Jali is widely nicely. It's more static, but then again, it's designed in a way that it's able to cut off glare most of the times and lolly breaker buildings had that you know they were they were they were very beautiful done and even uh, louis khan buildings have that you know so those are the facades which you really appreciate right they're not uh, very technologically advanced but they are extremely so they were, effective i mean uh, they, it's not that they, they were technologically advanced because they did the jolly in a way that you know that would cut right. off air so they did all the calculations only thing is that uh, you know they are not dynamic they're static that's the only thing now we have the technology to create dynamic facades which will change you know which will uh, unfortunately the static facade you you cut off the view you know from inside the view does get cut with the jolly however in a dynamic facade how it helps is it cut off the view when it's glare but other times it opens up completely so that's the, they were also technologically, but yes, of course, now the way the technology is, it is really helping. To, uh, it's a designer's dream now, you know, you you have, you talk about it and the technology is there. That's right. I was actually going to ask you this. Uh, if uh, you can uh, reveal to us what kind of softwares do you use for uh, specifically net zero energy projects? Or, uh, be, or if you can just tell us at what stages do you need these softwares? Like where does the boundary come between uh, like, you know, old school creativity where you're actually conceptualizing and then where do you take it on to a software and uh, start analyzing? So generally, uh, once we are, uh, you know, we uh, we are through with the concept stage. Concept, we would, I mean, uh, I mean, how we work, we want to uh, do the concept unless it's a, it's a, it's a completely contoured site where we start from day one, you know, where we have to model the site. But other than that, if it's a flat site, we the concept we would normally do some sketches, and then we would shift immediately to uh, so to the software because uh, you know to understand the sun angles, the shading, and all. So it's right from the beginning only, you know, uh, that we are uh, we are using uh, using uh, these uh, computer simulation softwares right from the very uh, very beginning. So then, uh, as we evolve, you know, then of course, even in uh, once the concept we understand how the shading is happening what is the depth of the you know glazing and all we would need so just to get a ballpark idea and then we freeze the concept and those are done at a very boxy and you know conceptual level the next stage schematic is definitely where we are trying to detail the building a little bit more uh, you know kitna what should be the height what is the depth am i able to capture the light with this kind of you know so all through i would say uh, we've been you know we are using it Right. And uh, lastly, uh, coming back to the question that we started with, uh, what do you think is the role of passive technology in nature in 
energy efficient and net zero building. So, how much of a role does it play, and uh, how do you uh, like integrate it? I feel it has the most important role to play. Uh, both nature, I think it's uh, you know, so nature. Like I said, that you know, when you connect people to nature, half your battle is won because that you are finally designing for people, right? So if you can, so for their well-being and uh, you know overall uh, well-being, nature is very important. Just a beautiful tree outside can really uplift my mood. Just walking through a garden can uplift my mood. So uh, as we saw in the projects, and actually not only us, when people National Geographic came and other you know news channel came and they interviewed people, they said you know we love to come an hour early here. Some also you know made a little joke of it, saying that you know when we had five fight at home with our wife, I come an hour early. I sit, I calm myself before I go to my work. Otherwise, I can't work. And then you know like Friday evenings, they say that there are people playing guitar here. And you know, uh, it's and birds are chirping. There's waterfall. It can't get better. They say that you know it's a lovely connect. So um, nature that way, yes, definitely. One is overall enhancement, overall well-being. It lo looks beautiful. That's one aspect of it. The second is that in our housing and other project large campuses, we have really reduced the stormwater lines by thirty to forty percent using natural uh, areas only for you know draining of that uh, you know storm water even along the roadside we don't have any storm water channels this is just a you know a swale which is created which will do so you can actually reduce your uh, you know all these storm water lines it helps to mitigate your heat effect i mean your urban island uh, you know heat urban island effect just by having greenery your temperature drop is you know 2 to 3 degrees so, uh, so of course, it's very important. Like I said, half your battle is done. If you get in nature, you insulate your roof with terrace gardens you have. You don't need insulation as much. You know, the earth will do the trick. So, uh, so yeah, so nature, of course, very important. Next, coming to passive. Again, the remaining half, I would say at least, uh, you know, uh, half of the battle is again, the remaining half or at least 40% of the remaining 40, uh, out of 50%, 40% is one. Because if you orient your building right, if you do window wall ratios, if you do right selection of glass, I mean, all these uh, shading of buildings, you are, you achieved so much of your heat, uh, you know, reduction just by doing all of this. And the remaining part, uh, you know, you're using active technologies like, uh, of course, occupancy sensors and all that. Of course, they have a role to play, but major battle is done by these two uh, aspects only. Right, so I think both of these factors are uh, the most important coming when it comes to considering a net net true. energy, net zero true. energy. Sorry. True. True. Uh, okay, so with that, I'd like to conclude uh, this session. We thank you so much, Ethel, ma'am, for being here today. It was a very insightful and interesting session. I'm sure it's going to inspire a lot of people to start designing more energy efficiently. So thank you. Thank you, Shivani. Thank you, Thor's team, for uh, you know asking me to be here. It's been my pleasure. And I wish you the best. I mean, you're doing a great job of, you know, uh, compiling these videos and putting it across to students and young professionals. I think it's a great job uh, being done. So it was my pleasure to be here. Thank you.